Welcome to Build Automation with Rake and Albacore. This screencast will examine build automation in a .NET development environment, although many of the tools and techniques discussed apply equally to other development environments. You may be asking yourself, what is build automation? Build automation means making the build process executable. This often includes things like compilation, testing, static code analysis, setting up directories, and packaging for deployment. A good rule of thumb is, if you find yourself repeating the same process, you should automate it. This applies to builds as well. The main motivation for automating the build process is to save time. Another good reason is to eliminate human error. Because an automated build process is repeatable, it can be tested and error can be eliminated. Once you have a functioning build script, it is guaranteed to run the same every time, and therefore it can be relied upon. If the build process requires human intervention, then the probability of problems occurring is much greater. Because a build process provides detailed instructions on how a build should be performed, it functions as documentation for the build process. It is much better for a build process to be formalized in a script than to be the knowledge of a single individual. Finally, having an automated build facilitates continuous integration. That is the practice of having a server that is continually integrating and testing an application. If you are not familiar with continuous integration, I recommend you read Martin Fowler's excellent article on the subject on his blicky at martinfowler.com. This screencast is not about continuous integration, but just to provide a taste, I'm going to demonstrate a basic workflow. I have an existing project that is using JetBrains TeamCity continuous integration server. TeamCity is one of the more popular continuous integration servers, especially for .NET projects. I'm going to write a test that will fail. I'm using ReSharper here to run the NUnit test. just to see that the test does fail. And now I'm going to commit it to a subversion repository. The TeamCity continuous integration server is monitoring that repository. It's going to detect that a change has occurred and it's going to trigger a build process. The TeamCity quick view window that you see here is a system tray application that's part of TeamCity. It's used to provide build notifications, so it shows me when a build has been triggered and also the results of that build, whether it be a successful build or a failed build. The build has failed as expected because I committed a failing test. The value of this simple workflow is that I now know almost immediately when a team member commits code that breaks the build. The definition of a broken build varies with each project, but commonly includes compilation errors, and failed tests. All right, now we're getting to the fun stuff. I get to introduce Rake. Rake is a Ruby DSL, that's domain-specific language, for scripting builds. It is not a .NET build tool. There is nothing in Rake that is specific to .NET. So why should I care about Rake? I've explained why you should care about automated builds. All that remains is to explain why Rake is an excellent choice. The number one reason is Rake is built on Ruby, which is a powerful dynamic scripting language. Rake build scripts have access to the entire Ruby platform. Also, being a scripting language means that Ruby is excellent at file system manipulation and working with text files, which are two of the things commonly required in build scripts. Let's start investigating Rake by writing a Rake version of Hello World. Of course, the first thing we need to do is get Rake installed and running. Since I'm looking at Rake as a .NET build tool, I'm going to use Iron Ruby to run Rake. So the first task is to install Iron Ruby. If you haven't seen it before, Iron Ruby is an implementation of the Ruby programming language that runs on the .NET CLR. To install Iron Ruby, download the MSI from ironruby.net. Ruby has a package management system called GEMS. When using IronRuby, the GEMS system is invoked using the command iGEM. 
For example, we can view the list of currently installed gems by calling iGem with the list command. And we use iGem to install rake with the command iGem install rake. The first step for creating our Hello World rake script is to create a rake script file. The convention is to call it rake file. The editor I'm using is Notepad++. If I tell it that the file is a Ruby script, then I get syntax highlighting. A rake script is broken down into a set of tasks. I'm going to write a task that prints hello world to standard output. The Ruby command to print text is puts. Ideally, a new developer should be able to take a copy of the project run the rake command and get a default build. If I try that at the moment, I get an error. What's happening is that rake attempts to execute a task called default, and I haven't defined one. If I go back to my script, create a new task called default, and specify that this new task depends on the existing hello world task that I've already created, Now when I run this, I get my hello world. It's also nice to provide some documentation with our tasks, and we can do that with a call to the desk method, and provide a description, the default task, and I'll say this one, uh, say hello. Now I can make a call to the rake command uh, with the task parameter and it will provide a list of all the tasks that are available within that rake file and their descriptions. As you begin experimenting with rake you will probably start to look for some help and there is a, some help available on the rake command by calling rake and passing the help parameter and also the other good resource that I've found is rake.rubyforge.org. There's rake file format documentation, which is very helpful for writing your rake scripts. You may be wondering, do I need to learn Ruby to use rake? No, but really yes. You can probably get a long way copying someone else's rake file and modifying it to suit your solution. But without knowing some Ruby, you won't get the power of Rake. The good news is, Ruby is easy. A good starting point is the edge case Cohen's. The Cohen's are a set of failing Ruby tests. By fixing the tests in the prescribed order, you learn how Ruby works. Albacore is a suite of Rake tasks for .NET solutions, created by Derek Bailey. You can find Albacore on the web at albacorebuild.net. There are tasks for compiling with msbuild, generating assembly info files, running nunit tests, executing SQL scripts, and lots of other fun things. To install Albacore, we use igem install albacore. My final demo for this screencast is to add a simple rake build script to an existing Visual Studio solution. You can see that my solution contains one project, an MVC2 web project called rake demo. I've added a reference to nunit.framework and I've also added one test, one very simple test which I expect to pass. And it does. The next step is to add a rake file. I'm going to use the Visual Studio text file template. And I'll call my script rake file as usual. You'll remember from before that rake's going to call a, default, a task called default. So I'll define the default task and make it depend on another task called compile. 
This task method that I've been using is for defining general purpose tasks, but there are also more specialized tasks available, such as the MS build task, which is uh, defined in Albacore. So I'm going to use the MS build task for my compile task. Um, so you can see that there, there are some options that have to be provided. You have to say what kind of build configuration you want to use, which build target to use, which is things like clean, build, rebuild, and also the name of the solution file. To make this work, I also have to tell my script how to find Albacore, and we we use the Ruby require statement to do that, which is similar to using in C Sharp or imports in VB.net. I have to require Ruby gems and Albacore. Now if I give that a go, I need to rename the rake file because Visual Studio created it with a .txt extension. So that's a successful compilation. I'd like to extend my build script now to also run the tests in the project. Once again, Albacore provides a specialized task for doing that called nUnit. So here I just have to tell it the path to nUnit console and the assemblies that contain the test that I want to run. Now I also need to add my test task as a dependency of the default task so that it will get run. Once again I'm going to run the build script to make sure that everything's working correctly. Use the rake command. There's the compile and it's run the unit test as well. You can see there, one test run, zero failures. The next thing I'd like to do is extend the build to also package up my application for deployment. So I'm going to create a new task called package and add it into the list of dependencies. What I'd like it to do is create a clean package directory for me. So I'll use a task called clean directory. And then I want it to zip up the solution and place it in that output directory. So I'll have another task called zip. So to do the directory manipulation tasks, I'm going to use some methods from the Ruby standard library in my clean directory task using this rm underscore rf to delete the build directory if it exists and then I'm immediately creating the build directory with make the underscore p. If I run that at the moment, it will fail. Okay, so this time it's successfully created the directory for me, but it's failed to run the zip task because I haven't written it yet. And if I just show you Windows Explorer, you can see that it's created an empty build directory. Back to my script, now I'm going to create the zip task. Actually, once again, I can use a special purpose task from Albacore called zip. And I just have to tell it the directory that I want to zip, the name of the file to create, and where to put it. And here I'm using Ruby's file.join method, which simply joins the location of this rake file and the build directory. 
So now if I run that, I'll expect it to do a build, do a test, create a clean output directory, and zip my solution and place it in that output directory. So here's Windows Explorer again. There's my build directory, and inside it, rakedemo.zip, which is a zipped copy of my application. Hopefully you know enough to start scripting .NET builds with Rake and Albacore. There's a lot more to learn about Rake, Albacore, and especially Ruby, so be sure to bookmark their documentation and take the time to learn how to use these powerful tools.